Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the Los Angeles Public Library's YouTube and Facebook channel. I'm Kathy, a youth services librarian for the Los Angeles Public Library, and I'm so excited that you're all here with us this afternoon for another fantastic program for children and teens. To, today we have with us Lisa and Paolo from the Echo Park Film Center to talk with us about experimental filmmaking. Before our program begins, I want to let you all know that this summer, the Los Angeles Public Library is having our annual Teens of LA Film Festival, with submissions being accepted June 1st to June 30th. We are accepting applications in the following categories. Book trailer, documentary short, experimental short, live action or animated short, micro short, or public service announcement. So if you are between the ages of 11 and 18, send us your short film in any of these categories to be entered into the Teens of LA Film Fest. Submissions are free and must be received between June 1st and June 30th of 2021. I also wanna give a special thank you to our Library Foundation for helping to make programs like this possible. Now, let's welcome Lisa and Paolo. Yay. Brrr. Welcome back everybody. I'm Lisa, this is Paolo. We're coming to you from Los Angeles, uh, the land of the Tongva and Chumash people. We like to begin our programs with a land acknowledgement to say how grateful we are to live, work and play on these amazing lands. And if you are coming in from all over the world, think about where you're at today and how you can be a good steward of the earth and um, be grateful. We're gonna talk today about film, right? We're talking about film and we love the library so much as we were counting the days till this happened. This is our second time. We're going to be here for a total of three times. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, the library, Los Angeles Public Library. We are library fans, as you all should be. Big fans and fans of, fans of filmmaking. Because Last we time, films. yes, we make films. Echo Park Film Center is a place where you can come and learn how to make films with people your own age and get inspired. Um, right now, it's a joy to be able to bring some of our programming to you online. And last month we met and we talked about filmmaking in general, because we know a lot of people are interested in getting to become filmmakers and start making films, but sometimes you just don't know quite where to begin. That um, little uh, exchange is archived, so you can check it out in addition to this one. If you were with us last month, welcome back. If you weren't, welcome. And uh, today we are going to talk about experimental film what experimental what does that mean do i experiment what, what is, is experimental, experimental film we well, well we're gonna find out we're today. gonna find out we're gonna tell you we're gonna learn together we're gonna share ideas yeah because as kathy was saying uh teens of la film festival is coming up and uh you can apply you can send in your film june 1st to 30th 2021 i think this is the fourth or fifth annual amazing so um once again just going over our categories we can have a book trailer uh, we can have a PSA. What's a, public, a PSA again? It's a public service announcement. I like That's, that. That's, you know, some local issues, you know, that maybe people should know some more about. So yeah, whatever you want that to be. Book trailer is like, you know, a movie trailer. It's like, you know, kind of like a little uh, encapsulation of a book you're excited about. I could be a new book, could probably be an old book too, right? Books. Because there's books. no such thing as a new book or an old book, just a book you've read or haven't read, right? So all books are exciting. Like a movie trailer for a book. Like a movie trailer for a book. Yeah. Uh, because that's why it's called a book trailer. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, experimental, which we're going to get to. Uh, short film, live action or animated. So animation or, you know, real life things happening. Documentary. We're, that's going to be the topic of our next session. And then micro short, which just means. Ooh, so short it hurts. Super short. Like 30 I'm, seconds. I think they say a minute on the website. A minute, yeah. less than a minute. And so there's the chat available, which we've alluded to. So we cannot see the chat, but ask those questions. Ask, ask, ask. Yeah. And at the end, Kathy will bring it home if any of this doesn't make sense. So once again, Los Angeles, California, Echo Park Film Center. Please, I know these are difficult times for all of us. We have many family members that have been affected by COVID, lost their jobs. Some sadly maybe have lost their lives and other things, but we are in this together. And once we get through this, please come and visit us in person. In the meantime, we are accessible via email, via online, via these wonderful um, seminars. So let's talk about experimental cinema. Let's talk about experimental cinema. Well, first of all, what is it? We're going to get to that. But what we want everyone to remember is everyone has a story to tell and what's yours. So the way you choose to tell your story, you know, you can choose to tell it in many, many ways, but it all sort of comes back down to the story. Everyone's got a story. Bing, bing. That was the, you got a story to tell. So experimental film uh, content, right? Most films, I think we think about like, what are they about? 
right? That's the content. So you can, you know, first this happened, then that happened, da, 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 you know, a story, a narrative story. But experimental film is more about the form, the form. So what kinds of ways, uh, what, what, what does that mean? Well, it could mean the process of making the film. You could be drawing attention to like, how is this film made? So kind of like the film behind the film. And I'm not just talking about like a making of, I'm talking about like, you know, how the process came to be. So let's say process, not product. So that's, you know, pro the process of making the film. The form, you know, which is kind of, you know, again, the materiality of, um, of the way the film comes together. So, you know, like if we were talking about a painting, instead of what the painting's about, we might be more interested in the paint or the brushes or the way our hand puts the paint on the canvas, right? More so than the end um, painting of a amazing castle in the clouds or something like that, right? So uh, we're thinking about the, the tactile nature, the touch, the feel, the materiality of the film itself. It also means, here's the secret with experimental film, whatever you want, yeah. right? Because it's, it's an, an experiment, right? And I think, you know, we're so often, we watch TV, watch other things, and we want a beginning, we want a middle, we want an end, we want good things to happen, bad things to happen. But experimental film, as Lisa said, whatever you want, like let, let yourself dream, let yourself experiment, let yourself feel the emotions in your lives and articulate those emotions onto film. So, wow, I think the chat is blowing up right now. What does that mean, express my emotions on film? We will guide you into that world. I think that's what's happening. <laughs> yes, expressing your emotions. And also kind of sometimes it can mean using whatever you have on hand. So, you know, even though, as Paolo was saying, we're used to seeing these films that sort of tell stories in a certain way, sometimes life isn't really like that. Sometimes life is a little crazier, a little messier, a little more confusing, a little more exciting, a little more like dreams or like fragments. You know, maybe experimental film is more about um, expressing our inner state, the, our emotions, our feelings, our thoughts, our dreams on the film versus, you know, kind of traditional storytelling. So in that way, it's it's freer because no one experiences the world the same way. We all have different um, experiences. We all have um, different ways of interfacing with our surroundings, our reality and ourselves. So it's a chance for you to express that on film in a unique way because your film is going to be unique to you. But Lisa, what if I don't have a camera? Cameras are expensive. What if I want to make a film? I want to be in this contest. I want to be with my peers. How can I make a camera without a film? What can I do? How can you make a film without a camera? Yeah, that's true. How can too. you make a camera without a film? Yeah, that's true. Well, here's one way. It's pretty trippy, but you can put things on film itself. So this is 16 millimeter film. This is old school. Before uh, computers were even invented, there was 16 millimeter film and 35 millimeter film, which is a little wider. Um, but this goes back, you know, over a hundred years, this kind of thing. So just putting things on the film and um, letting them react to the sunlight. This is a movie. Right you mean here. this? You mean? <laughs> I mean, yeah, drawing on film. So there's some other words. Here's some Here's some uh, just drawing, like literally drawing with a Sharpie on the film. And then I can put that through a projector and then, you know, we're going to see a little bit of this in action in just a minute. But it's just that I don't even need a camera. That's why it's called camera-less animation. It means I don't even need a camera. I can just draw. Sometimes it's called direct animation because I'm directly animating onto this piece of plastic, which normally gets coated with emulsion run through a camera. But again, you can just draw right on it, anything you like. That's wait, pretty wait. groovy. Confused, confused. So yes. I make a film with my phone. Yeah. Why are you talking about these cameras? What, what's this thing I'm holding? Well, that's a camera. That's a motion picture camera. So this is the way film worked for many, many years and continues to work. So it's not about ones and zeros. It's not binary. It's actual film in a machine that moves around. So what Lisa was holding, as she said, was film that you would normally put through here would be exposed to light and you would have an image. But we say, I can't, I don't have one of these cameras. Maybe I can't borrow one from the Echo Park Film Center. Free classes for youth, 19 and under, but you can draw on the film. So one way of making experimental film to draw and manipulate found objects, these sort of things. You can also stick some objects on the film. So let's take a look at a filmmaker yeah. named Stan Brackage. Uh, he made this film in 1963, quite a few years ago. It's called Moth Light, M-O-T-H-L-I-G-H-T. We're going to just take a look at a segment of this, a one-minute min segment. Here we go. And see if you can figure out what's going on in this film.
All right. So Whoa. that was, yeah, that was that beautiful. Was, that was yeah. Stan Brackage. So beautiful. Uh, American filmmaker, Moth Light. So what do you think was going on there, Paolo? You know, I feel, I don't know. I mean, I, I if I would like, just like the term experimental cinema, if I took the term experiment of experimental, that's a clue to the, the films we're talking about experimenting. So with Moth Light, if I take those two words, moth and light, I'm going to guess I'm seeing images of moths, maybe the, the wings, the, the bone structure, the wing structure, and I'm seeing light shine through them because the way projectors work and still work is light is shined through this magical emulsion that Lisa was holding and then projects an image on the screen. But in this case, this filmmaker took discarded, you know, no moths were hurt in the filming of this film, but finding discarded moths, you know, maybe, maybe moths that have gone to the other world and taking their, their elements and taping them onto the film. How cool and how radical at that time and still radical today. Yeah, so actually taking the materiality of the moth, the deceased moths and taping them physically taping them onto this and then putting them through a projector and shining light through. We also saw some plants on there, right? I don't know if you noticed, there were some moth wings and there were some plants. And, you know, so thinking about when we think of moth and light and wings and plants, like maybe that's a way of a moth seeing the world. Like we saw the moth and then we saw some plants. And maybe if I was a moth and, you know, flitting around, floating around, that would kind of maybe be my experience. So we're maybe getting a little, like window into the moth's world, which is pretty cool, right? So um, I love this. there's no beginning, middle and end to this film. Like we could just watch it on a loop. It could just play over and over and over and we could get into a dream state. You know, it's not sort of a traditional, this happens and this happens and this happens. Um, the filmmaker was experimenting. He'd never tried this before. So he thought, well, what if I try doing this with my film? So it's experimental in process. It's experimental as we watch it, because we're all going to have a different reaction. And the um, awesome thing about experimental film is there is no wrong reaction. There's no, there's no one answer. Whatever you think, whatever you feel is exactly right. And that's how it kind of connects with the filmmaker when they're experimenting making these, because the filmmaker doesn't know how you're going to feel about it. It takes you to complete the cycle of making the film. So audience, filmmaker, and film itself become this kind of beautiful triangle awesomeness. And I'm sitting in Panorama, Panorama City. I am not, but perhaps you are going, okay, we're 14 minutes into this. I don't have one of these cameras. <laughs> I don't have this magical stuff called film. How can I make a film like Mothlight? Well, you could take images on your phone or a still camera. You could put them in a computer, but maybe it's a sequence on flowers. My grandmother has a beautiful flower garden. I'm gonna take a picture of every petal in that garden and I'm gonna stitch them together and it's just gonna be a meditative film about flowers. But wait a second, how come there's no characters? How come there's no actors? There doesn't need to be. We're experimenting, right? We're taking the elements around us. So let's move on with that. What if found footage, right? I yeah, think yeah, found yeah. footage would be something. So fun. here's another thing we can do. So yeah. we don't have a camera. Yeah. We don't have um, any, you know, film leader. Yeah. Uh, but we do have uh, things that are around us that have been made by other people. So another way of experimenting, experimenting with film is taking things that are already out there in the world that already exist. So whether that is old home movies, you know, most of us have family or community footage, you know, that we've captured on our phones or old movie cameras or, or video cameras, VHS tapes, whatever there may be. And we can kind of repurpose those. There's also all kinds of footage that's out there on the internet, out in the world, in archives, like the Los Angeles Public Library has archives. And we can uh, rework existing footage and put our own um, creative stamp on it. And so let's take a look at this. This is a, a work that Paolo and I were working on and uh, it's called Decay. And what we did was we found some old footage and we put it in our compost bin and we let it decay. So let's just take a look at this, see what you think.
close to call. All right. So wow. beautiful. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying the movies. Are you? Yeah. Even Me though too. we provided them, they're really Me beautiful. Too. Yeah. So this is purposefully taking film and kind of destroying it and seeing what happens um, when we let things um, decay. And it felt some part of part of the quarantine era sort of felt like everything was kind of falling apart and everything was different and changing and making us a little anxious sometimes. So that was a way of kind of reflecting that just by letting this old film stock that had been made by um, Hollywood and just letting it decay. So you can take things from the internet and you can take things from your own family and you can, you know, manipulate them in an editing program if you like, or you could take an old photograph and maybe leave it out in the rain and let it get all, you know, mushy and crazy and photograph that. And, and maybe that can kind of express your inner state. Maybe you're feeling a little anxious too. And um, maybe, yeah, that decay film wow. is lovely. It makes me think of the wonderful filmmaker Guy Madden. Oh, cool. Guy Madden is from Winnipeg, a place where not too much happens, but Guy Madden makes these magical worlds out of, yeah, old old timey footage. And he kind of manipulates them to make them into something new. So, you know, these things don't really cost anything because we don't have to have a camera. We don't have to buy film stock like a scrapbook. Exactly. Like Whoa, we can take little so cool. pieces of our lives. I love this. Yes. It's a scrapbook of the mind. And we're presenting this to people and they can sort of get a little vibe about where we're coming from. And they can also think like, wow, I relate to that too. Like things right now are a little, a little unsettled. And I, I feel that too. And wow, thanks for, for sharing your feelings with me on, uh, in a digital medium or making a film or all those things. What are you showing? Now, Lisa, that? What the heck is that? I don't want people going home and saying, mom, dad, Lisa and Paolo said, take my film and put it in the compost, put it in the trash, right? DVDs, maybe not. Um, your phone, <laughs> drop it in the toilet don't, compost. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. We're talking don't about the that. old films. But what are some cool ways, last time people were excited about different apps you could use. You know, with your phone, you take a picture and you put like the hazy sunset or you put the rain app like... Film is the same. You can use tons of editing programs. We can talk about them later. Um, or iMovie, Final Cut, Premiere. We're not here to sell a product. Do some research. Talk to your peers. There's 10,000 programs out there. Yep. But you can put hazes and filters. Do a lot of the stuff that Lisa did so beautifully in that film, but do it, manipulate it with on your computer. So think about that. Yeah, or the framing. Like maybe we get real close in, like with the moth light. Like our perception totally changes when we're looking at things like super close. Like let's take a different view of the world. You know, like the bug's eye view, what does that look like? Or way far away, what does it look like when you're on top of like a mountain or a building and everything looks tiny? Like think about the scale of things. Think about your approach to things. What happens if you desaturate all the color um, from a scene? Maybe, you know, black and white has a different vibe than color. These are some of the things, you know, just by kind of experimenting and taking things out or adding things in or changing where you're looking from, your perception, it'll give us a new window onto a, onto a world. And often it's that, again, that interior world. Okay, let's talk about dream sequences. Move along, move along. They can be very experimental. Even in traditional narrative films, when you get to the dream sequence, that's when everything goes crazy, right? Because dreams have no uh, logic the way that real life sometimes does. Dream logic has its own set of rules. People can fly. You can be walking backwards. You can morph into a dog. You know, like all these things can happen in dreams. So why can't they happen in movies? Let's make them happen. So we're going to see a very early experimental filmmaker by an amazing female filmmaker named Maya Darren. And this was shot in Los Angeles in 1943. Maya Darren was a dancer who later became a filmmaker. And she made an incredible film called Meshes of the Afternoon. We're just going to see the trailer. It's about a 15 minute film, but here's a one minute version. So let's check it out.
Ooh, intense. It was intense, but yeah. beautiful, right? We've all been there. We've had dreams that are magnificent, that are poetic, but also dreams that are ominous. And I think that is a combination of many of those things. Also, you know, I think some categories, sometimes at festivals, they say music videos, right? Your favorite band, we're dancing around, we're doing stuff. But that had elements of a music video, right? There's a soundtrack, there's images. So when you think of these experimental films, you could pick up your favorite song, or maybe you do your own music on the some editing programs on a computer and just create your own beautiful world. We're excited to see what you can offer. Yeah. Could you make that a film like that? The answer is yes. I mean, the special effects, I mean, pretty simple. Someone wearing like a, a, a black blanket with a mirror in the front. I mean, that's all it is. Right. But still terrifying to this day. So uh, the logic of dreams, you know, again, in these, days, these strange days that we've never collectively lived before. I've talked to a lot of people who've said they were having wild dreams right now. So um, if you're having some wild dreams, maybe, you know, keep a little dream journal and maybe that can be the inspiration for your film. So it can reflect your reality, but it's kind of the flip side of the the day-to-day -day reality. It's kind of what our subconscious is thinking. And it takes us to kind of a mysterious magical place where anything is possible. So yeah, check out more of Maya Darren. It's incredible, incredible, incredible. Um, let's see, what's next? What about just images? What about just straight experimental images? We're going to watch a film now called Mis Manos. It's, um, it could be called a documentary, but it's an experimental documentary. It's made by a former student from Echo Park Film Center named Walter Vargas, who's a filmmaker, a film educator, a community activist, uh, someone who loves uh, everything that film has to offer. And so let's take a peek at Mis Manos. Um, we might just watch part of it. Well, but, let's see. It's uh, four minutes. I mean, oh, yeah. Four, four yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll watch the whole thing. Let's yeah, we'll watch this and... Um, Mis Manos by Walter Vargas. It's in Spanish with English subtitles. Oh, it's good. The, the sound comes later. You can yeah. keep playing. I'm it's good. Yeah. Yeah. The sound comes just after the first title. Yeah. We should have. We should have prepped. Here it comes. Mi nombre es María Antonia Hernández. Tengo 50 años, me vine de México para Los Ángeles, California, a los 17 años. Uh, llegué aquí, empecé a trabajar en la costura, en restaurantes, limpiando casas. Eh, Y he trabajado hasta ahora vendiendo en el Swami. Yo vendo, yo vendo purses de Leris, Wales. Trabajo cinco, cinco, seis días a la semana. Un día lo agarro de descanso para ir a comprar mercancía. Cuando tenía Tres años o cuatro años, mi mamá me regaló con otra señora y esa señora me llevó al Distrito Federal. Y la señora pues me tenía como esclava trabajando. No fui casi a la escuela. Y me vine para acá. Y aquí empecé a trabajar. Aquí me casé, aquí me divorcé, aquí tuve a mis hijos. Tengo mis manos morenas con, con callos porque trabajo mucho. Y esa es mi vida. Esa es la vida de María Antonia Hernández, que no tiene vida porque nomás se la dedica trabajando para sus hijos. Apaga eso ya. No, quiero saber de ti. ¿Qué quieres saber de mí? 
Apa tuh? Iya lo. Algo. Ma. Pues me casé. Y tuve un hijo que se llama Daniel Torres. Me divorcié cuando él tenía tres años. Me casé cuando él tenía... Cuando él tenía diez años. Me volví a casar con mi segundo esposo. Tuve dos hijos. Walter Vargas y Dayana Vargas. Uh, Viví con mi esposo casi 20 años. Nos separamos porque no me ayudaba económicamente. Pues ya sabes todo, ya lo dije ahorita en la, en la entrevista. Quiero saber la, la verdad, la de tu lado. Uh, mis manos ¿cómo son mis manos? mis manos son morenas las tengo ahorita ya las tengo arrugaditas están cansadas de tanto trabajar la, tengo callos en las manos me duelen mucho en la noche las manos y son manos que han trabajado mucho Toda la vida, los 50 años. Trabajan todos los días, igual que todo el mundo. Y esa es la historia de mis bellas manos. So, mis manos, by Walter Vargas, one of my favorites. Um, I've seen this film many times and and I just, I love the, the story itself, but I also love the way Walter chose to tell the story. And something else that happens often in experimental cinema is that you really feel the presence of the filmmaker. So there we heard Walter, you know, speaking with his mom um, in the early hours of the morning, some of the only time that they could spend together because um, she was so uh, busy and, and working so hard and to, to for them to have that conversation about her life, you know, took some doing. And, and in a way, the film was the vehicle um, for Walter's mom to be able to tell her story, which is really amazing. And Maya Darren, we saw her starring in her own film, Stan Brackage, we felt his hands, you know, putting the, the moths on the film. So again, thinking about how you put yourself into your film. And there were several experimental elements to that film, right? I think so. You know, and Lisa said it so beautifully. We love to show you, you know, some filmmakers that are world renowned and one filmmaker that's a teen that made a film in high school, but they're all compassionate and beautiful and they all move us in certain ways. I think that last film probably affected so many of you so powerfully, but why did we show it? Yeah, because it is elements of a documentary. It's a real life story between a, a, a son and his mother, but it's the way it's presented. It's not, hello, mom, talk to the camera, right? There's elements of the past. There's elements of maybe dream states. There's elements of um, recreating the past. You know, with elements you have, there's figments of or, or fragments of the American flag and and other things. So, how do we tell a story? We can experiment with the way we present it, with the form, with the style, like Lisa's talking about. So. Yeah, and the elements just sort of represent the way we are many things. You know, we are made up of many elements. We are our past, we are our dreams for the future, we are our experiences, we are the sights and sounds and, and our environment. And all these things were represented very beautifully, very simply um, in that film. Again, the, the American flag representing, you know, the dreams his mom had, um, the interview with her, um, the, the recreations of the past using actors, you know, that wasn't actual home footage of his mom hugging her ex-husband, but, you know, it was recreated and, and footage of his mom at work and he was using film and video and then a, an interview. So, you know, all these elements come together to make something uh, very unique, very beautiful, 
and very special. So um, if you have any questions, we're seeing some comments coming up, um, but if things come to you after today's session, feel free to write us info at echoparkfilmcenter.org. And we just want to, you know, remind you that you have these amazing resources, Canopy, um, you can access free with your uh, Los Angeles Public Library card. The best way to learn about films is to watch films, right? Uh, LAPL is a photo collection. So again, if you're interested in making found footage films or uh, found media films, check there. Lynda.com is amazing, also accessible with your LAPL card. There's a lot of how-tos. There's great books in the library about filmmaking. Here's two of our favorites, Action by Bill Brown and Andrea Richards, Girl Director. Um, there's a really cool site that I found on um, YouTube called Experiment 120, Experimental Films for Kids. And it was curated last year by Marie Pierre um, Boniol. Boniol. And um, there's 120 short films on there, animation, all kinds of stuff. And it's appropriate for ages seven and up. But if you're a six year old, I'd sneak on there too. But, anyways, and then of course, Echo Park Film Center. We have all kinds of fun things. Um, we have our Vimeo channel. You can see tons of films by uh, kids your age, teens, kids. And um, we have free workshops, film and video in person once it's safe to do so again right now online. And right now we have something called Cine Kids, and that's a monthly meeting. It's the second Thursday of the month, four to 5 p.m. You can write to us and get the Zoom link. And we just talk about films and share our works in progress. So if you're making films and you want some feedback from your peers, this is a great resource, Cine Kids. And um, I guess the main thing is just try it, right? The only rule is make and uh, get out there and make something and um, you know, maybe you're going to love it. Maybe you're going to not love it so much, but the more we make, the more we share, the more we do get our messages, our voices, our visions out there. Um, that's what makes it all happen. So you are amazing. You are beautiful and talented and we cannot wait to see your experimental films. And did you, did we mention that LAPL is giving away a Ferrari <laughs> to the winner of this contest? That's not true. They are not. They are not. And prizes don't matter. It's good to enter a contest. It's good to be proud of your work. But if you, the fact that you made a film, you are awesome. You are wonderful. So just make something. You know, it can really be anything and have fun with it. So maybe we shift to chat questions if there are some. If there's any last, yeah, last second questions minutes. anyone has about experimental cinema or comments, anything you saw today or are wondering about. Anything coming through? I, I see a lot of thoughts going on out there. Hmm. What do I want to ask? Hmm. Oh, Maria from uh, Culver City. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that didn't come up, but we thank you. <laughs> I'm sure someone is out there. But we know that you're awesome. Yeah. And um, so we're going to see you next month. Uh, you know, same time, same station. And uh, we're, next month, we're going to talk about documentary cinema. But remember, it could be an experimental documentary. Um, but uh, yeah, any questions or comments in the meantime? If great not, to see we you. pass it back to our host. Yep, we're passing it back. Kathy, bum, bum, bum. Take it away, Kathy. Lisa and Paolo, it was great having you here to talk about experimental filmmaking. Um, we loved having you. We can't wait to have you back for our next session. And for those of you watching, please visit our website, lapl.org slash events to find out when more of our programs will be and to find out when this next one is on filmmaking. Thank you all for tuning in at home and we will see you next time right here for another great program. See you next time, everybody. We love LAPL. We love LAPL.